Hello everybody, my name is Tasman May, welcome back to my channel Tea Books and Tasman. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my lockdown breakdown book haul. Oops. Don't know about the rest of you, actually no, I'm pretty sure the rest of you will have done this. Every time I was sad, I bought more books. And I've been sad a lot. I've just got these stacks behind me, so I'm just gonna kind of pull off. The first one I'm picking up is Forest of Souls by Laurie M. Lee, and this is a Fairy Loot exclusive edition. I am actually a new Fairy Loot rep. I've bought, like myself, the last four boxes, and I love them so much. This is a young adult fantasy with a badass East Asian main character. Oh, I always forget that the fairy loot things do this on the inside of the dust jacket and they're all east asian i feel so seen war is looming sersha must master her newly awakened abilities before the trees shatter the brittle peace or worse claim sango the friend she would die for the naked itself also has this little bad boy at some point i bought clap when you land from i think from an indie bookshop i started reading this but it is to do with these two girls who are half sisters, they don't know that the other person exists and they find out when their dad dies. Death, I'm fine with sometimes. At that time I wasn't fine, so I had to put it down, but it's definitely something that I want to read again in the future, like pick up again in the future. I love books written in verse. Sarah Cross Anna is one of my favorite writers. Everyone that I know that has read it absolutely loves it. I got this off of Meg's recommendation from Meg with Books. Oh, and um, black author, black characters. Asian author, Asian characters. I don't think I've shown this one in a book haul, but last year I read The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary and I picked it up in paperback when it came out because I listened to it on audiobook. It follows Tiffy and Leon who share a flat, but one of them has a nighttime job, one of them has a daytime job, so they literally share a bed, but they never meet. They have certain hours where they're allowed to be in the building on certain weekends and then they start communicating through post-it notes and Tiffy leaves like extra cakes that she bakes for him and stuff. It's a romance, so. Do with that what you will. I also have, oh, I don't know where it, no, I do know where it is, but I can't bother to get it. I have her new book, The Switch, as well, which I pre-ordered and got that in hardback. Here's a picture of it. I haven't read it yet. I've heard that it isn't as good as the flat chair, unfortunately, but when I want a light read that, you know what? I need a light read right now because lockdown breakdown. I'm gonna pick that up next, guys. I'm gonna pick that up next. <laughs> I picked up Elementary Blood and Ink by Adam Christopher for 99p in Forbidden Planet. My friend Jean describes these books as official published fan fiction. Elementary is a TV show about Sherlock Holmes and it's set in America and I prefer it to the BBC Sherlock by far. Johnny Lee Miller is my Sherlock. Benny C, who is he? Another fairy loot book is The Gilded Ones by Namina Fawn, and this was a extra book. There's always a hardback exclusive, and then this was like a bonus one. So in that month's book, there were two books, which is just a Are we girls or are we demons? Are we going to die or are we going to survive? In this bold and immersive fantasy, a young heroine fights to save a world that would dare tame her and discovers she is her own fiercest weapon. Ooh. And yes, the writer is a person of color, so it's own voices too. Molly. This bit's for you. I got sent by HQ, This Lovely City by Louise Hare. So this is set post Second World War in London and it follows a black man who is a, he has a day job, but then at night time, he's a jazz musician. Fucking yes. My dad is a jazz musician as well, so wanted to pick it up. So thank you so much HQ for sending it to me. I think I mentioned this in a book haul when I was talking about ones that I ordered at the beginning of lockdown, but I had them sent to my parents' house because I'm a genius. And this is Cries Wall by Nina Varela. This is my September, October pick for my Patreon book club. So check the link in my bio if you wanna join us for that. Again, a young adult fantasy in a world where the automaton, oh no, automa, like robot people, that were created to be slaves and servants to the human people have risen up and taken over. So we follow two characters the head of a household who is an automa, a girl, and a human girl who is a servant in that house. And her father was killed by the father of the automa girl. And so to avenge her father's death, she's going to kill the automa girl. And then I assume they like me and become bezies and lovers and stuff because it has a female, female romance, a female, female romance. I don't know if the characters in this are East Asian inspired or not, but the author is East Asian and she is also queer. So it's own voices in the female, female romance respect. 
The next book is On Chapel Sounds by Laura Cumming. This is a memoir of Laura Cumming as she's writing about her mother who was abducted when she was a little girl. I think she went missing for something like 10 days. She had no memory. She just showed up back home one day. The police had no clue what had happened. So it's kind of like a mystery, but of her finding out the truth of what happened to her mum. And then it also follows her as she is discovering what happens to her mum. My friend Lauren from Lauren Wade Reads didn't like it, which I found out after I bought it which is great, but I'm still excited to read it. I love me a memoir. Now that I know the things that Lauren didn't like about it, which was that it wasn't so much about the mystery, it was a lot more to do with Laura than she was expecting. I kind of know what I have coming and then hopefully because of that, my expectations will be more aligned with what the book actually is and then I'll like it more. I requested another book from Myriad Publishing and they kindly obliged. So I now finally have a book that I've been meaning to get for ages and that is what we talk about when we talk about rape by Sahila Abdullali. This is obviously a non-fiction book talking about rape and rape culture. Anything to do with kind of women's rights, human rights, that sort of thing I'm interested in. So I'm very excited that I have this so I can educate myself more on the topic. So I can have even more horrendous conversations at Christmas with my uncles. Yay! Next I picked up Wonder Woman Tempest Tossed by Laurie Hals Anderson and illustrated by Leila Del Duca. I picked this up from Gosh Comics, which is an independent comic book and graphic novel store in Soho in London. Love it, love it, love it there. It's brilliant, thank you very much. This is essentially a refugee story because it follows Diana. Her boat off the Amazon island, whatever, has been taken off by the wind and she comes to our world and is a refugee in our land. It's talking about our current refugee crisis through the story of Wonder Woman and the Amazons. Speaking of the Amazons, I picked up the Amazons by Adrian Mayer. Lives and legends of warrior women across the ancient world. I saw this in Waterstones by Trafalgar Square and there was another book on the Amazons and the first Amazon book that I picked up had not so good reviews. Someone recommended in one of the reviews saying, don't bother reading this, read this one instead. And they had it, so I was like, okay, cool, thank you very much. Combining classical myth and art, nomad traditions and scientific archeology, span the Amazons is the first comprehensive account of warrior women, both in myth and history, across the ancient world from the Mediterranean Sea to the Great Wall of China. Did someone say China? I'm even more interested. Yay. Speaking of China, my lovely friend Ilya sent me Before the Sword by Grace Lin, which is a Mulan story. She sent me this about the beginning of lockdown when I was feeling uber uber depressed because of course my trip back to China to see my family was cancelled and I was just crying all the time because I missed them. So she sent me this. I think it's a retelling of one of the original Mulan stories. I've got the little note from Ilya. It says, hey Tazzy with a love heart. You said you were missing China and I know you love Mulan so I thought I'd get this one for you. I hope it might take you back home through the pages and cheer you up a bit. I love you, another love heart from Ilya. I miss you, you're my best friend, why so far away that's rude. A few more fairy loot ones now. This is Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy, not Bone Crier's War because Crier's War is a different book. This is stunning. This came in my first ever fairy loot box and I opened it up and every single thing in that box was something that I loved. I loved all of it. Look at the exclusive artwork. Ah, oh, very little exclusive editions are always signed by the author and they come with a letter from the author as well. And of course, uh, I had a rule with myself with Fairy Loot that I'd only let myself continue to get Fairy Loot if I read the books and I didn't. I had four Fairy Loot boxes and I was like okay I need to cancel my subscription now because I'm being an idiot and then I was asked to be a rep. I mean that makes it fine right? <laughs> The next Fairy Loot exclusive edition is Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashadoust. This is again an exclusive edition with pretty pretty things and the letter and it's sprayed green on the edge and it's like, oh no, this one's not glittery. Bone Cries Moon was glittery. Jesus. I mean. Oh, Ames, wait, come be in the video before you leave. Ames is one of my patrons, that's actually how we met. And Ames has come to England for a week and I was like, come stay with me! Who needs a hotel <laughs> when you have friends? This book was getting a lot of hype on Bookstagram and that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, who also wrote My Best Friend's Exorcism. I set in Charlestown, it's like a southern state in the United States, and there's a group of women who have a book club. It's one of those close knit towns where like everyone knows everyone and a man moves in and they are convinced he's a vampire or they find out he actually is a vampire and they try to slay him with the book club. Next, I have The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. This is a black 
queer book written in verse about a boy who becomes a drag queen. The book designer for The Black Flamingo actually reached out to me on Instagram saying that she would be interested in having a look over my poetry collection before I print it later this year, which I'm gonna be selling on Etsy. I've heard the most incredible things about this. Everyone that read it has loved it and I need to get on it. Then I got The Black Tudors by Miranda Kaufman. This was recommended by Lauren from Lauren Wade Reads, who I've mentioned a few times because she's amazing. It's going back to the Tudor times and talking about how through our whitewashed lens, we just assume that everyone has always only ever been white in England and in Europe, but nah, there have been black people and other people of color for forever. I'm sure most of you know by now, but I'm the world's worst book club host. I have up until recently hosted the Strange the Reader book club on Instagram with my friends Danny and Kirsten. I have since dropped out. I've told them that I'm not gonna continue with it because I am a piece of shit and we've been hosting it for about a year and I haven't read a single book. If they do choose to continue the book club, I will keep promoting it on social media and stuff, but I'm just not taking part in it myself. That being said, one of the books that I picked up with the intention of reading was The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. It was originally self-published which was really cool. There are quite a few fantasy and sci-fi books that were self-published or like released online and got such a cult following that they then got picked up by publishing houses. So love that for him. Love that for him. Next up was another book from my best friend Molly. Woo. She actually bought me these earrings as well and she picked up for me The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller in the beautiful Virago, no not Virago, <laughs> Bloomsbury Modern Classics edition from Hatchards. I was reading Circe at the time, have I finished it? We don't need to talk about that and she knew that I wanted this in this edition and she bought it for me. I love you. I don't know specifically what it's about other than the Trojan War and apparently it's gay as well so woo! Next up is The Furies by Katie Lowe. I got a signed hardback edition for half price in Forbidden Planet. This is something that's been on my radar for a while and it was cheap so I was like cool yeah sure. And I was with Molly at the time and I think she read it and loved it so I bought it and then a week later it came out in paperback and I prefer the paperback but that's fine. That's just fine. It's fine. 1998, a 16 year old girl is found dead on school property, dressed in white and posed on a swing. Four girls know what happened. They've kept their silence. Until now. Next up is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I bought this at the beginning of lockdown from an independent bookshop. It follows a young black lady who is babysitting a white kid and they're in the supermarket and either security or the police are called or something and they think that because she's a black woman with a white child that she's abducted the kid. What's really interesting is that I wouldn't have guessed that from the cover. It looks like a really light-hearted, fluffy kind of like women's lit thing but it deals with like intense racism. I have The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. I haven't read anything by her. I'm obsessed with Frankenstein. I love Miss and Mary Shelley. So I got this. Unfortunately, after I bought this, I saw Jesse the Reader's review and he didn't like it. So that's great for me, yay. I picked this next book up because the sequel to it has just come out and I keep on seeing the cover everywhere and it's the most beautiful thing in the world. The first book in the series is The Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams. What I didn't realise until later is that this is actually a either prequel or a sequel series to an already famous fantasy trilogy. But instead of going back to the old ones, I figured I'd start with the new ones because sometimes the old ones can be a little bit sexist. Big chonky boy epic fantasy with a pretty cover. So yay. <laughs> Next I got The Greek Myths, the complete and definitive edition by Robert Graves. How complete and definitive? We'll find out. I love Greek myth things, but I wanted a big book with lots of the things and lots of the words. So here we go. Robert Graves is infamous for Greek things. So whoop whoop. Molly gave me these next two. She was having a clear out. So I asked for So Lucky by Dawn O'Porter and Deeds Not Words, The Story of Women's Rights Then and Now by Helen Pankhurst, who is the granddaughter of Emmeline Pankhurst, I believe. I hadn't heard of this one at all. Molly was just like, I think you'll like it. It's about women's rights. And I was like, cool, thank you. And I got this for a cousin for Christmas. Don't remember what it's about at all, but she said it was really, really good. So I asked for it from Molly, so cool, thanks. I went back home home for the first time a while ago and we went to my childhood Waterstones. So I picked up Leaves of Grass, the first 1855 edition by Walt Whitman. This was referenced a lot in a play that I really, really liked. I've been meaning to get it since then. So I own that now. I got North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell in the Penguin English Library Classics Edition, which is my favourite edition of classics. I was watching the BBC version of the 
adapt BBC adaptation of North and South with Richard Armitage in it and it was really really good but I figured that the book would hopefully have a little bit more substance and depth to it. On that same little trip I got A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes who I've been calling Natalie Hines a lot on this channel so I apologise. This is a feminist retelling of the Trojan War. Again this was on my Cersei kick. I was like give me all of the Greek things, thank you. This is A Woman of No Importance, the untold story of Virginia Hall, World War II's most dangerous spy by Sonia Purnell. I love me a non-fiction, I love me some history, I love some spy espionage stuff. I've only ever watched kind of espionage espionage shows and films which I do enjoy but as this is non-fiction I figured I'll give it a go. Also it was on offer which always helps. Next I got Read With Pride which is book two in the Paper and Heart Society by my lovely friend Lucy Powery. It's for like maybe like pre-teens and like the beginning of teenage years. This is about a girl who discovers that there are some LGBTQ plus books that are banned in her school library and she is like nah bitch and then the book begins. I thought for a second that I've already talked about these, but I haven't on my channel. It's because I talked about these books on a Patreon live that I did recently. From the same place that I ordered Lucy's book, I also ordered Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. This was recommended by Jen Campbell. It's a sapphic gay thing and it's a classic because it's vintage. This is also a book that I got from an indie bookshop. It is This Book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell, illustrated by Aurelia Durand. This is a kind of kid's book on how to be anti-racist. I want to read it myself and also get copies for all of my nieces and nephews. These next few, and by few I mean all of these, I got from a secondhand bookshop which isn't too far from me. It's in Brixton and it was the first place that I went once lockdown eased up. So I got J.M. Barry's Peter Pan, presented by Eleanor Graham and Edward Ardizone. Mm -hmm. The story of a play. So for those of you that don't know, Peter Pan was originally a play by J.M. Barry, and then he wrote the book. But there were differences between the play and the book, so this is a novelisation of the play by J.M. Barry. I also picked up The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson, who is one of my favourite authors. This is, I believe, a middle grade fantasy book. Who? Jeanette we Really? I don't know. Let's see. Pick this up purely because of the cover, because Naked Lady. Thank you. This is The Book of Opposites by John David Morley, an extraordinary love story set in Berlin against the backdrop of one of the most uncertain and dramatic periods in the city's history. Was it an accident or was the tragedy part of a greater unexplained mystery, one which connects all events and people in a way beyond our usual understanding? I love books that are kind of mind fucky about like, are we all connected? Is there fate? Is destiny a thing? I feel like this is gonna be that. The next few are mass market paperback fantasies, which I always love. This one I realized when I talked about it on the live that it might actually be a sequel, which is great for me. I need to stop doing that, that's Molly's influence. Every time I do a peace sign, slap Molly. <laughs> This is The Chessboard Queen by Sharon Newman and it is a Arthurian legendary telling but I think it might be the second book because also by Sarah Newman, Guinevere. And this follows Guinevere but I don't know if they're companions because it doesn't say that it's a sequel to Guinevere. I don't know. In The Chessboard Queen, Guinevere, Arthur's beautiful young consort, discovers to her dismay, for she loves Arthur, a passionate attraction to Lancelot, the shining white knight beloved by King and Camelot. And so as earthly passion and spiritual love are woven together in a spell binding and totally charming new version of Arthurian legend. Of the Arthur legend emerged. Yes. Cool. It was in the fantasy section. I assume it's fantasy. Yay. Then I picked up Golden Witch Breed by Mary Gentle. What are you about? I don't know. Apparently it's a brilliant and rich world of fantasy. I like the cover and I picked it up. This is Hidden Turnings, a fantasy anthology of short stories edited by Diana Wynne-Jones and the writers in it are Terry Pratchett, Geraldine Harris, Douglas Hill, Tan Lithley, Helen Cresswell, Robert Westall, Lisa Tuttle, Gary Kilworth, Roger Zarsney, Mary Rayner, Emma Ball and Diana Wynne-Jones. These two I got in Waterstones in the clearance bit. First one is Clean by Juno Dawson. I think it might have just been one pound. It was either one or three pounds, just because there was like, there's a tear on the back. And honestly, that doesn't faze me at all. I wanted to pick this up because Sabine loves this book. And I was like, cool. It's about drug addiction in young people. It's a young adult contemporary. Then I picked up Anne of Green Gables in the beautiful Puffin in Bloom edition. It's by Ellen Montgomery. It was also discounted because of like, there are some pages that are creased at the top. And again, I'm pretty sure I got this beautiful thing for three pounds. Next, I got The Wizard of Oz 
and The Emerald City of Oz and Glinda of Oz by L. Frank Baum in the Penguin Threads edition. <laughs> this is, I think, the first three books in the World of Oz series. And guess why I picked this up, guys? Because it's this month's pick for the Strange the Reader book club. I hate myself. I hate myself! Next, I picked up for some reason. Oh, no, I know why. <laughs> Equal Rights is the second book, I believe. I lie, it's the third book in the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. And someone told me, I think it was Jean, that this is the place to start. I have a few of them. I got this in a secondhand bookshop. Henry Pord's books on Charing Cross Road. I love that place. Fantasy! I love these covers! Yay. Molly, again, bought me another thing, because she always buys things. Spend your money on yourself, my darling. She got me Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which she loves. And she loves the Night Circus, that's it. All I know is that this is the first book in a trilogy that is set at a magical circus, and I do like circuses. I really liked Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Amanda Foodie. That was a vibe. Oh, horrible. I get the reference, comment down below. I actually bought this ages ago, but I don't think I've mentioned it in a video, and that is Dracul by J.D. Barker and Dacra Stoker, who I think might be a descendant of V. Stoker. This was bought at one of those points where I was like, I'm sad and I just need to buy anything. So I don't know when I'm gonna pick this up, but I'm interested. I bought Dracula in the Penguin English Library Classics Edition at some point. I want to read more Gothic literature, like classic Gothic literature. So this is here in my life as well. Next book is another fairy loot edition. And that is Incendiary by Zorari. Rider Cordova. Pretty pretty, pretty pretty, and pretty pretty! Don't know anything about this, but as it's fairy loot, it's obviously a young adult fantasy. Then I think when I was at Henry Ford's when I picked up the Terry Pratchett, I also picked up Ordeal by Innocence by Agatha Christie. Now, I've been meaning to read some Christie for a while, and I really like these old school editions. It has a scary snacky snack. Oh my god, it's a snacky snack. Snacky snack. Snacky snack, you dare snacky snack. I bought this one secondhand from my friend, and that is Dune by Frank Herbert. So <laughs> I want to read this before the Timothy Chalamet version comes out. One of those things that I wanted to get to but never got around to buying and <laughs> but I got it off my friend for I think three quid and now it's a matter of when I will get to it and if I'll sell it to another friend for three pounds. <laughs> I bought Three Women by Alyssa Dev. <sighs> Can we get drinks after this? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> this is Women. No it's not. Three Women by Lisa Tadeu. Tadeu. Tadeo. This is a non-fiction book. It follows three women and their relationships. I think it's to do with like their sexual endeavors. There's a female female romance. And I know at Hay Festival, this author and Hallie Rubenhold, who wrote The Five, did a panel together called Eight Women. And I loved The Five. It was one of my first books of this year and is still one of my favorites. Ages ago, I bought this for my niece. The His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. I'll show you the individual covers. The boxy box is like this. And then book one is Northern Lights. Book two is The Southern Life. Book three is The Amber Spyglass, which I'm still currently reading. I read the first two books a couple months ago and have fallen in love. And because J.K. Rowling is the hashtag worst, I've decided to collect these instead. So I didn't give it to my niece because I'm a piece of trash and I've kept it for myself. Ames, who was here earlier, who has now left, unfortunately, she had to go back to France. Ugh, what? Why? Why leave me? Why? Why? She got me the French edition of His Dark Materials. And funnily enough, it's the picture that's on the side, but it isn't on any of these covers. So I'm very happy to have this. I'm obviously never going to be able to read it because it's in La Franche, but it's beautiful and it's a very floppy boy. I got myself another edition of The Northern Lights and no one is surprised. I got this in a little indie place in Greenwich. And I also picked up the play version of His Dark Materials, which is adapted by Nicholas Wright. And this was on the National Theatre when I was like four, so I obviously didn't see it. So I bought this, but I'm probably not actually going to read it because the National has archives where they film everything that they've ever put on. And you can book to go to their like kind of private cinema space and you book a slot and you can watch it projected on the screen for you. So I'm definitely going to do that when theatres open up again and I'll get to see it on the screen. Okay, final few. I got The Book of Dust, which is the second book. No, The Book of Dust is the name of the trilogy and The Secret Commonwealth is the name of the book. This follows Lyra as an adult. So book one, which is La Belle Sauvage, is pre His Dark Materials. This is post His Dark Materials. And then book three is gonna be 
post this. But like I said, I'm still reading the Amps Fireglass. That one's putting me in a slumpy boy, which I'm not happy about. I'm not enjoying that one nearly as much as I did the Northern Lights. I like the Subtle Knife a little bit less than Northern Lights, but I still enjoyed it. Amps Fireglass just isn't doing it for me, but I've heard the most incredible things about this trilogy, so I am going to persevere. These aren't new at all, but as I'm talking about the series and they're right next to me, I have these little novellas that are set in the same world. This one follows Lee Scoresby and Yurik Bernson and how they met, and then Lyra's Oxford follows Lyra. Okay, this is two years after the conclusion of the Amber Spyglass. And finally, the most important book of the year, unintentionally at the bottom of this pile, so perfectly, perfectly laid out. Greek Myths by the love of my life, Jean. Written by Jean Mengers, illustrated by Katie Ponder, who is also an absolute gem. Follow them on all of the things. I'll leave the things down there. <laughs> it's published by DK. It's a children's encyclopedia of the Greek myths. Jean is doing a PhD in Greek mythology. She is a scholar. She is a badass. She is the love of my life and I would die for her. She's just the best thing since like sliced bread. What was the best thing before sliced bread? Because she's better than that too. She's better than sliced bread. Sliced bread isn't even that great. Who came up with that saying? This is amazing. The illustrations are incredible. Katie Ponder has been phenomenal. She has done an amazing amazing job with this and of course in the least biased way possible the words are beautiful as well it's so educational and also funny and it's age appropriate too because of course a lot of ancient greek myths had a lot of rape and sexual assault and jean has been very tactful in how that's dealt with i've been buying this for everybody because everyone needs it and i hope all of you buy it because it's fucking incredible and on that note hmm I'm gonna go get a cocktail on a bar, on a boat. Oh my god, it's been a stressful time, guys. It's been a stressful time. I need the alcohol is in on my face, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for watching this book haul. If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you'll know that I'm working on releasing a zine of my poetry in November. I'm just, I'm just good. Like, life's a bit stressful, but life's also good. And I'm surrounded by people that I love and my beautiful cats. I can't remember which patrons I mentioned in my last video, so I'm gonna mention all of them just in case, because I don't want to miss anyone out. My most recent patrons are Gaia and Larissa, so thank you so much. I honestly, it means the world to me. To everyone that signs up, it's really, really helping me, truly, because I mean, everything's so upside down at the moment and I work in theatre and that just means I have no job. Woo! So thank you to everyone that signed up. For those of you that don't know, Patreon is a thing where you can sign up and there's like a £2.50 pledge or a £5 or a £10 and depending on which pledge you do, we do book clubs, I do lives with them. My dad described it when he was trying to get his head around it as like people tipping me for my YouTube and then me giving them bonus content as a thank you for the tip, if that makes sense. You can also cancel it at any time, so if you just want to like donate £5 one month, you can do that and then cancel it straight away. I'm gonna list off everybody else off my phone now because don't want to miss anybody. We have Gaia, we have Larissa, we have Maureen, we have Amy, we have Jess, we have Hanukkah, we have Caitlin Ann, we have Margot, we have Harriet, we have Sarah, we have Amy, we have Bronwyn, we have Anna, we have Lizzie, we have my mum, we have Anna Marie and we have Ames who left half an hour ago and now I'm sad. Thank you all so much, thank you to my patrons, thank you to you even just watching my videos. It just Oh, I just love you all so much. Okay, I'm gonna go have a breakdown in private with my friend now with some cocktails. So, mwah, 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 stay sexy. I love you all so much. Mwah. <laughs>